Having not had the Jordan challenge in 2K since 2011, most players will be eager to play through it and unlock the rewards at the end. Overall, there are 15 game scenarios to play through, with up to 3 stars obtainable for each one. Having played through and completed all of them, it's certainly no walk in the park, but while doing so, I've picked up a few tips and tricks on how to make life easier for yourself in the process. So with that being said, here's how to beat all of the Jordan challenges in NBA 2K23. The first challenge, A Star Is Born, requires you to win the game whilst getting 16 points and 9 rebounds with Jordan. As soon as I tried this, I immediately noticed that winning would be one of the main challenges, as Patrick Ewing is sensational. To easily get the points, stick to mid-range jumpers and driving to the basket. You only need 16, so this shouldn't be an issue whatsoever. Then for the rebounds, either change MJ to the power forward position or leave your man open to shoot and stand under the rim just outside of the paint to collect the board if he misses. If you're still struggling for rebounds, you can always cheese it and turn the CPU rebounding sliders to 0 and yours to 100, but if you want to do it legit, then stick to the other strategies. The Got Next challenge is a nice step down in difficulty from the initial one, but still is quite tricky. You'll need to win the game, score 12 points, and win by 15 points. Not having to get the rebounds in this one does make it a lot less stressful, as you aren't relying on RNG as much. But the catch here is that your team is made up of some pretty low-rated players, while you're facing the NBA All-Stars. To make sure you get the win, you'll need to stick to what Jordan is good at, which is driving to the rim and shooting mid-range. But in this game, try to drive to the basket more, as then you can get some and ones and try and pull away from the opposition. Seeing as you can't shoot threes, this is your only way to score more points than them without having to rely on stopping them. So set some screens and try to get to the rim to force a foul. The third challenge is called The Arrival, and you're going to be asked to score a ridiculous 63 points with MJ, whilst also grabbing 6 assists along the way. There's no real way to make this easier for yourself, aside from altering the quarter length so that you have a lot more time to accumulate the points. You do need to learn MJ's release pretty well, as 3 pointers are definitely the way to go. So set a bunch of screens and try to green as many as you possibly can. If you're still struggling to hit the shots, you can of course turn the difficulty down or change the sliders to make your shot success rate higher, but this one is just a case of muscle memory and running the same play over and over again until you get the points needed. The Star of Stars challenge is another one where you need to get 8 boards as well as a decent amount of 40 points. To get the points, you can either make the quarter length longer and try to spam 3 point shots, or find a play that gets Jordan some space and go for his more consistent mid-range jumpers. The points are the least of your worries though, as you're going to have to pray to the 2k gods that some rebounds come your way. If you change MJ's position to the power forward, or simply just stand under the rim while they shoot, you should get them over the course of the game. But as always, if you're struggling come the fourth quarter, then try turning your rebounding sliders up and theirs down. Also, you need to get 3 assists, which isn't really a challenge, but the easiest way to do this is to pass it to Danny Ainge and just throw it up from anywhere, cause the man is a green machine. When I first played the shot, I wasn't expecting it to be a quick time event, but that's all this one is. It takes about 15 seconds and emulates Jordan's game winning shot against the Cleveland Cavaliers in 1989. First off, you have to juke Larry Nance by tapping A or X a lot of times, and then simply aim the marker at the basket with the left stick after catching the ball. It's all pretty straightforward, but I did realise that when you have to hit A or X a bunch of times, it doesn't register it if you do it too quickly. So try to consistently press it a little bit slower, and you should be absolutely fine. The sixth challenge is called the Shootout, and has you scoring 40 points while keeping Dominique Wilkins to under 20. This is the first time you'll have to keep a specific player from scoring, and the best way to do this is by never leaving his side. If you're consistently pressuring Wilkins, you can make sure that he doesn't receive the ball or get a shot away almost every play. This will mean that other players will get buckets, but if you're scoring during your possessions, then you should be pretty comfortable as your CPU players will get some stops on the other team. If you want to cheese this challenge a little bit, then pull your power forward away from his man and let their power forward shoot every single time. This will make sure that Wilkins won't be shooting, so definitely can't get those 20 points. The 69 points challenge is exactly what you'd imagine it to be. You need to get 69 points with Jordan, but you also need to finish the game with a field goal percentage of over 50%. So when doing this challenge, make sure you're very comfortable with Jordan's release, and then try to green as many threes as possible. Run the same screenplay and just keep throwing them up. 
If you're struggling to get the points, then increase the quarter length or bump up your three point success rate, but you should be fine once you get into the swing of things. Also, seeing as you need to hit half of your shots at least, only take the shots if you're basically wide open and that makes it easier to green time. Then finally, once you've got the points, don't take any more shots with Jordan unless you're comfortably over the 50% field goal target. For the bad boys challenge, I'd highly recommend prioritising the 10 rebounds as they're by far the hardest objective to complete. You also need 4 assists and 47 points, but they can be achieved pretty easily by hitting threes and passing the ball to BJ Armstrong for the assists. Put MJ at power forward for the rebounds, or just stand under the basket waiting for the opponent to brick a shot. This one is frustrating and is mostly all up to chance, but if you're patient, the boards will come. Start of a dynasty is a fairly comfortable challenge, with you only being required to score 30 points, get 4 rebounds and 10 assists. You probably won't need to cheese the rebounds on this one, as they can fall to you throughout the game. And for the 30 points, you'll need to have a 50% or higher field goal percentage, which means you only need to hit 10 out of your 23s. The assists can be a little bit annoying, as you don't have a great selection of shooters on your team, but you can always rely on John Paxson to hit a few, and then score some points at the post for the rest of them. Everything about the Shrug Challenge is easy, until you have to keep Clyde Drexler to under 17 points. Especially when you consider that this is an extremely low amount of points for a player of his ability. You'll also need to hit 6 threes in the first half and score 39 points yourself, but that part is pretty easy. Your only real option here is to guard Drexler out of the game completely. It will require a lot of patience and concentration, but once you learn his movements and what plays they like to run, you should be able to predict his next move pretty easily. The double nickel challenge is a nice change from the more complicated ones that come before it. All you need to do is score 55 points and keep John Starks to less than two threes. Even though this sounds tough, as your margin for error is so small, you just have to simply never leave his side on the perimeter. If you apply constant pressure and keep a hand up, there's nothing Starks can really do. Then all you have to do is hit your shots and rack up the points, so if you're struggling to do this, you can always just make the quarter length longer, but you probably won't need to. Now, there's a lot to think about during the Father's Day Victory Challenge. You have to score 22 points, grab 9 rebounds, get 7 assists, and win the game by 12 points or more. The only remotely challenging objective is actually getting the boards, as the rest of them will more than likely happen naturally throughout the game. Make sure to hang out under the rim with MJ to be the first of those rebounds, or just move him to power forward and hope that he's in the right place at the right time. Unfortunately, you'll have Dennis Rodman on your team from here on out, so he's going to be challenging you for every single board. But gradually you will get these, so make sure to not forget about maintaining that point gap. As the first time I did this challenge, I ticked all the boxes and then realised in the last 30 seconds that I was only 6 points ahead. Which, to put it simply, was pretty painful. The third from last challenge is the infamous flu game, where Michael suffered food poisoning the night before playing the Utah Jazz in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. The requirements for this one are much the same as you've seen throughout, but Michael won't be at full fitness. You need 38 points, 7 rebounds and 5 assists, which you should be fairly comfortable doing with by now. You're also playing with the infamous Bulls side here, so you can get assists via passing to Pippin or Steve Kerr, who are both more than competent scorers. If you can prevent Rodman from stealing your boards, then everything else will be pretty easy. Just stand under the basket and hit Y or Triangle as soon as the shot misses to try and be the first to jump for it, and you should get them with no real problems. The penultimate challenge, Pass the Torch, has you trying to keep Kobe to under 20 points, whilst also scoring 36 yourself and winning by 10 or more. This one is really tough, as Kobe is everywhere. He's incredibly quick and slips away from being guarded with ease. Your concentration has to be razor sharp to stop him, but if you do your best specifically to guard him out of the game, then it's definitely possible. When you have possession, find a play that works for you and just keep running it. I always opted to shoot threes with Michael, as by this point I was so comfortable with his release that I could green it almost all of the time. But if you prefer mid-range jumpers or driving to the basket, then that will work fine as well. The final challenge is the iconic Last Dance, and has you scoring 45 points whilst keeping Jeff Hornacek to under 15 points. By this stage, the 45 points should be a walk in the park. Run whichever plays you found success with over the other challenges, and just keep racking them up. As for Hornacek, this is where it gets a little bit harder. 15 points is nothing, so you have to be really careful when guarding him. 
Also, much like Kobe, Hornacek can either shoot from the perimeter or drive to the basket, so you have to be ready for anything. After getting a couple of stops on him though, you should find your rhythm, but it can get pretty frustrating. You can always cheese it however by selecting your power forward and simply leaving his man open so they're always free for a shot. This will mean Hornacek never actually shoots himself, making this challenge a lot easier. If this video helped you beat all of the Jordan challenges in NBA 2K23, then definitely check out the video on screen now, as I can guarantee it will help you as well.